Shabbat Shalom and welcome to our weekly blog from Adat Yeshua Messianic Synagogue here in Norwich. We're back to the beginning with Bereshit again and it's a wonderful place to start where we begin to look at how everything unfolds really that sets the trend right at these early stages of human history of everything which happens ever since. And of course if you go back to what is that first principle that frames human existence what is that when you strip it bare? It goes right back to better sheet one, two and three. It's laid clear for us there. The choices that God gave us, our reactions to those choices, whether we chose to obey God or whether we chose to disobey him. And then, of course, we know that mankind chose to disobey God. And, of course, the consequences of that have rippled all the way through human history ever since. We've lived with the consequences of sin, how literally the whole of creation groans under that sin that we as mankind have placed it under. It is literally suffering, the cosmos is suffering because of us and the choices and decisions that we make. And you know when you look at it in this way, every choice, every decision, every action that we, we have is in fact a power struggle when you put it in, in such a blatant way in that sense of looking back to what was happening. It's a power struggle. It's a power struggle. Who has control over your life who is able to decide what happens in your life is it you or is it god and that is the fundamental issue that comes back to this portion and speaks to us since the millennia that this has gone on through creation who has that power to control our lives and yet they say the word control because of course it's not really a control god never controls us you may not have thought of it in that way, but God never controls us. You know, he gave just one commandment to Adam and Harvard, just one. And yes, they blew it, we know that, but God never controls us. He didn't force Harvard not to take the fruit from the tree. He just said, I'm asking you not to. Harvard chose to disobey what she was told to do. She'd been told the best way to live as a human being, and she chose to make a decision herself rather than to rely upon a decision which the Lord had made on her behalf, as it were, which had been good for her. Now, God gives us that freedom to make those choices. But every day of our lives now, we are making exactly the same decisions. Do I do what I want to do or do I do what he wants to do? Who has the power to decide in our lives? We wanted to rule our own lives. And yet what we rapidly discovered, as we took that power to ourselves to frame and form our lives as we wanted it to be, what we quickly discovered is that if what we needed was control of our own lives away from God to control our lives, we had to begin to control others too. Because you can't seriously control your life until you've got others around you under control and the situations around you under control. And so suddenly mankind evolves into some kind of control freak, which of course mankind is exactly what it is today, a control freak in so many ways, dominating others, causing others to submit to you all the time, trying to control situations, manipulation, domination, you name it, it's there. You know, autocratic governments, um, toxic people, the, the list goes on and on and on and on and on. This is not, and it's all individuals in many ways. It's not just individuals and, and, and governments that do this, but as we thought it would be our freedom to take back to that control in our life. We thought it would be our freedom. Actually, we discovered that in, we became slaves, slaves to ourselves, slaves to our turbulent emotions, slaves to a lack of omniscience. You know, we can't actually make totally good decisions, perfect decisions, unless we are fully 100% completely aware of any situation that we are judging or looking at. We can't. Our decisions, our choices will only ever be partial. We are not God. We don't have that overview that God has. On the other hand, we trust God. We're listening to him and looking at how he says we should live. The one who does have that overview of our lives and sees every aspect of it, every aspect of it. You know, when someone comes to you and says, oh, you can't do X, Y, Z because I think so and so and so. And God looks down and says, yes, but you haven't seen Z, Y, X, A, B, C. God can see those things. That's why, of course, we mustn't be quick to judge other people because we just don't see the whole 
picture. We just don't. We should have some humility in all of this. We thought by bending the knee to God in obedience would mean that we were subservient to him, that we were going to be crushed in an autocratic way by our God. Little did we know. Had we agreed to say yes to God and lived in obedience, it would not have been a dictatorship. It would have been one of free choice, giving us free choice to say yes to him freely, voluntarily, because we love him, because we want to do it. That would have been the relationship and not an autocratic relationship at all. He would not have removed from us our personal freedoms because God never does that. He always lets us make our choices and be free even when we're about to walk off the edge of a cliff. That's who God is. He waits for us to say yes to him. We wanted to have godly power. We wanted to have the power of God to make choices. We failed. In fact, the more choices we make, the more mess we make of everything around us. And we live with the consequences and the results of this every single day. But praise God, Baruch Hashem, he made a way for salvation and redemption, deliverance from our position right now. Although we were lost in our sins, he made a way through Yeshua Mashikhenu that that relationship could be restored to him again. And we can now again choose to live in obedience to him and his ways. And if we choose to do so, then we will find our real, true humanity coming to the fore, who we really are meant to be as human beings serving God, we'll discover what life truly is all about and not the, the, the fake copy that we see around us so often in humanity, the wretchedness of it all. That is not how it is meant to be. We are meant to live in freedom with our God. He has the power to decide. We pray, we ask, we read the scriptures, we study, we, we seek his will every single day and then we step out in faith, trusting, holding on to his hand, that we're walking in his path. That is the way that we are meant to be. And Shabbat Shalom for tomorrow, and I will see you again next week. Bye-bye.